morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. This is AAU TV, and you're welcome to another edition of our special Valentine's Day show, the Mimosa Show. The Mimosa Show is a special um, talk show that we host on AAU TV to discuss issues about love, relationship, and more. I am your host, Aja Omi, and we are, today we are going to be exploring on a topic, what breaks or, and break, builds relationships. In case you didn't know, AATV is the voice of higher education in Africa. You can join in the discussion by following us on our social media platforms at Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube, AATV official on Instagram, and AATV underscore African Universities on X, formerly Twitter. My guests are already seated here in the studios, but I would introduce them after uh, we take the Vox Pop. I would like to mention that the show is proudly sponsored by Bainy Painting Naturals, Eden Bar, McBell Nutri Chips, TME Collections, Pamoni Collections, Rosebeck Ear, Nose and Throat, Throat Clinic. We'll be right back after we take and after we take this Vox Pop. Technical hitches, and so the Vox Pop will be done later. But I'll give my guests, I have two lovely guests joining me here in the studio, so I'll give them a few minutes to introduce themselves and then we'll delve into the discussion. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, ladies first. So, yes, I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my name is Safako Jenfi. Okay. I am um, a French lecturer, I'm an author, and I also. Um, love to mentor young adults. Wow, that's yes. nice. I guess you mentor me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gentleman. Right, so um, it's nice to be here. Mm -hmm. My name is Samuel, Samuel Panti. I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, I practice with Brain and Mind Medical Center, and I'm also a, um, a counselor with um, the Wellbeing Department mm -hmm. at Aran International School. All right, lovely to have you here join me to discuss our topic. Now, our topic for today is what breaks and builds relationships. Yeah. First of all, I would like to, um, you to tell us, when we talk about relationship, what does it entail? Okay. So I guess I go first yes, again. So <laughs> when we talk about relationship, actually we're looking at how one relates with the other. I'm using the word relation, relate again in my again, definition. Yeah. Okay, so we talk about the link or the how one you know relates with the other person okay so that is on a broader um Perspective. scale yeah okay. so if we should narrow it down to maybe we can talk about the family relationship okay. we can talk about work relationship we can talk about other forms of relationship also so basically that's a relationship that's a and in a relationship we have one or more parties, mm -hmm. and each party has a role okay. to play. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Mr. Samuel, yeah. I would like you to tell me what are some of the characteristics of a relationship, any kind of relationship. Maybe you would want to talk about the work one, and then also talk about the romantic one, since okay. it's Valentine's Day. Okay, mm -hmm. all, right. <laughs> all, right. all right, great. So um, in every relationship, there is, um, I'll say there are some particular things, as you mentioned. We have mm -hmm. trust, yeah. um, we have sacrifice, right um we have love mm. right because in every group you have to have um some of these um characteristics in order to make the the group go um successful yeah um there's no group that or, or there's no relationship that will be successful without love mm. there's no group that will be successful relationship that will be successful without trust and loyalty so i would say these are some of the major ones that um uh, in every relationship, mm -hmm. you or whether it has to do with romantic or it has to do with work yeah. relationship, mm -hmm. or you teach a student or any of them that will make it work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to um, break this discussion into two parts. We'll right, talk okay. about what breaks it, okay. breaks the relationship, and right. then we'll talk about how to build yeah, or rekindle the relationship. Yeah, okay. But first off, I would like to know what are some common behavioral patterns that um, nature relationships and um, mr samuel okay right so um I i'll say um
communication communication yeah i'll say communication what about um, communication so basically communication uh, makes you understand your other party or other partner um, if you have to communicate to you know how they feel um, what they want what mm -hmm. they don't like mm -hmm. and um, also um, get to know what you should do for them in order to make them um, the relationship bond mm -hmm. if the communication is not strong enough um, I think um, you wouldn't have mm -hmm. that pillar that you want to hang your relationship on okay. so mm -hmm. I would say it's communication communication yeah. uh, what about you yeah I think I can also add honesty honesty, honesty okay. you know and I think honesty builds trust mm -hmm. also so if you say this you do just what you mm -hmm. said and you should not say things cover things you should say things as they are but mind you you need to bear in mind the emotion of the other partner yeah. and so that is where you need to be emotionally intelligent so that in as much as you want to say things as it is you're going to be careful so that you you're not going to hurt the other person's feeling and you'll be able to live in spite of maybe the differences that you have mm -hmm. so honesty i think is a very important a very habit important. Yeah, that helps oh. a relationship to thrive. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would also, I think uh, you've both spoken about yeah. trust and then really um, communication. Mm -hmm. And so do you think love language has a, has a part to play in terms of Absolutely. nurturing the relationship? Absolutely. Yeah. Can you tell us? Absolutely. Maybe you can talk about the various um, love languages, educate okay. us on the love languages okay. so that... I'll start and then I'll pass yes. it on. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so we can talk about... Um, affection okay you know so some people's love language is showing affection mm -hmm. through touch and all that mm -hmm. others also maybe act of service helping out with other things so i think that you need to know the love language of your partner mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to communicate it effectively as such more often than not we we tend to express our love language to others not taking into cognizance that of the other partner mm -hmm. and so you would complain that oh i always do this for this person but she doesn't appreciate it but for all you know I think it may, maybe the person doesn't need you to buy gifts yeah. for the person. The person needs you to say maybe words of affirmation, like you look good, you are the best, mm -hmm. you know, I love you, yeah. things like that. But you don't do that. But then you bring in gifts and all that, thinking that that would be able to let your relationship actually grow. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't. So I believe that knowing your partner's love language mm -hmm. is prerequisite. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She mentioned physical touch yeah. and then words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. Affirmation. Um, quality, quality time is one okay. of them. Yeah. Um, I think she mentioned gifts as well mm -hmm. because yeah. that's another one as yeah. well. So um, whenever, whenever some maybe two persons are together, you have to communicate a lot, yeah. right? And um, it's through this communication and a lot of observation that you can get to know the love language mm -hmm. of your partner. Exactly. Um, if you are not observant, if you're not careful, you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you you uh, you have support mm -hmm. where we come in as counselors and psychologists come in, where we do have um, ways and means. You can go through a little bit of therapy, a uh, little mm -hmm. bit of um, counseling sessions mm -hmm. where we can help you figure it out for your okay. partner. So. We do have psychological tests that can help us out or okay. help you out or help the, the, the partners out. So, okay. Yeah, these are the things that can help. That can yeah. help. I guess you've, you've touched on some of the things to build the yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you don't know your partner's love language, you would, they're def they're, you the totally relationship get it would so. definitely, mm. yeah. Will yeah. definitely <laughs> not build up. Yeah. Um, I would like, um, Mr. Samuel, I would yeah. like you to talk about some red flags. We all know that red flags are like behavioral patterns or yeah. some things or activities or acts that our partners do that are sort of like our ex. Yeah. Can you talk about some red flags okay. that can really affect relationship which can they're quite a number. Yeah. <laughs> so um <laughs> And it's individual. It's more or less like uh, it's personal. Okay. What is red flag for me might not be red flag for you. Exactly. What okay. I feel that I can uh, work on, uh, maybe you might not really want to work on it. You want to move away from it or <laughs> run away from mm. it. It could be also based on your experience that you've had mm. um, with your past um, relationships. Yeah. So immediately you get into it, you see it a little bit, you want to run away. Yeah. So, But um, I think one major one that I'll mention is um, if the person does not forgive and yeah. the person is not open-minded because um, if what I feel is different from what you feel yeah. now if I do something and you don't like mm. and um, 
I apologize and you don't accept it. It's a challenge mm. because I'll make mistakes. And when I make mistakes, you should be able to, uh, to, um, to forgive me mm. for us to decide to, to work on it. But if you are not open-minded, we'll have that challenge of mm. which uh, um, we'll still be at where we are. Mm -hmm. So I think forgiveness is one major one as mm. well. Yeah. However, um, I think sometimes red flags come where we see them, but we tend to uh, close our eyes on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And later in life, it tends to come back at us. Mm. Uh, one major, you will realize it whenever you are doing, doing your courtship, you realize mm -hmm. it. But we feel that we can work at it, we yeah. can work on it, we can work on it. Some of them you can work on it, some of them um, you have to do more to work on it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, and it tends to be a challenge. So mm -hmm. if you realize that you cannot work on it, you can't deal with it. Um, talk about it and please you have to let go mm. because later in future it will just come back at your face as if nothing really happened yeah uh, so. before i come to mrs yeah. sepako so does it mean that sometimes some partners see the red flags and that is why they tend to like date for a very long time before they settle oh well, well you see um that is a uh, we can't entirely say that yeah. okay uh, it could be that like that but there are other reasons as well it could be um uh, financial issues currently mm. uh, going to coming mm. together it's, it's not easy and mm. of course uh, uh, the economy has made things mm. very difficult things were supposed mm. to be very simple unfortunately it's not like that <laughs> but, but I've heard people <laughs> I've heard people say yeah. um, you don't necessarily need to have a lot of money or you don't need to be financially stable before you settle they do say that but see you will definitely need some amount of money <laughs> we'll see. yeah wedding cost um, coming together also cost especially when uh, you marry and family will come in. Mm. You definitely need something like that, yeah. But I, I don't think um, red flags is one of the things that make people delay mm. with their wedding. But it mm. could be, though, but the other reasons as well, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mrs. Sefako, can you tell us how couples can identify and then um, change unhealthy habits in relationships? Okay. So I think this is where effective communication comes to play. Okay. So they should be able to name that habit okay and the ability to name that habit is the first step as you mean um let's say you are expressing anger mm. but what you feel is actually fear or insecurity mm. yeah. so you should be able to identify the particular emotion mm. that you are feeling that makes you react that way some people when they are afraid they behave as if they are angry. Yeah. Exactly. So right. you should be able to name the particular habit and then find time to talk about it. And by talking about it, I'm not saying do the blame game. <laughs> that it is your fault, yeah. you do this, do that. But yeah. find time to talk about it in a way that you can empathize with the person. Okay. Be in the perceive from that person's perspective. Okay. And then you'll be able to find steps and work it through together that is love mm. if you are not willing to do that then you can't say you love the person okay yes so in the case where um something is is happening or the partner is doing something that the other doesn't like mm. almost yeah. all all the time yeah. and then you agree you address the situation and your partner goes like oh that's how i am how do you handle such a situation? Yeah, that happens a lot. Yes. That's how I am. So it depends on how long you have been with a person. So probably in your mind, you think that's taking too long for, for the person to change. Mm. But mind you, the person has built this hab habit over, over time, time, over a long time. So it would take some time for the person to actually change. Mm. You cannot change the person. You can influence the person to change. To change. Okay. And again, I think that... Um, your approach you should also look at your approach probably the approach you might be using might be a judgmental one and nobody wants to be judged yeah. so the person will raise defensive mechanisms and is yeah. going to be on the defensive side at all time and wouldn't want to change but if you do it in a way that you mean for the good interests of both of you then i think the person will be able to sure. some habits are difficult to you know um, had overcome or to change. Yeah, so in that case, on. then you yeah. have to decide mm. that if I'm ready to live with this, mm -hmm. then I should be ready for the consequences. Mm -hmm. I should be ready to know how to yeah. bear with it. Yes. 
Yeah. So yeah, maybe oh, I think he wants to say yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it's like um, every relationship is like um, take it as a garden, exactly. like with, okay. with flowers. Mm. <laughs> you actually have to con be conscious about, about it. watering it every morning, making sure that you you approach the weeds. Mm. You have to be conscious about it. Mm. If you are not conscious about it, see, you have challenges. Mm. Uh, you have to be conscious about it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that, what I can say. That brings me to my next mm. question. Okay. How do you um, address challenges in the relationship, Mr. Sami. Okay, so um, of course, communication will, will work through all of it, right? Mm. Um, uh, so I'll tell you a story. So at a point in time when this is my personal experience, mm -hmm. uh, we have something called explosive anger, mm -hmm. where um, things happen little, 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 little. By the time you realize, it will just explode. Mm. So you let go. When you realize you can talk about it, you don't talk about it, then you let go. The next day will pop up again, and it will pop up again. Mm. It will be like a lot of balloons in the, in the room. Mm. To get to a point, you can't even close the room, right? And it's the same thing that happens to most of us, mm. right? Um, I think you would have to uh, be able to talk about it, right? So even in the communication, yeah. there are ways and means you can communicate. communicate. Because if you're communicating and you don't communicate well, mm -hmm. it might look like you're blaming the person. Mm -hmm. right? There, there, there are situations where you have to prepare the person's mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, in therapy, when we're coming to talk about very difficult conversations, right, we we'll have to prepare the person's mind. See, this is what we're coming to talk about. Mm -hmm. It might be very emotional. Mm -hmm. right? So please... <laughs> I don't take it to that extent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because if you don't prepare the person's mind and uh, you just hit, hit it on, on, mm. on the head like that, the person's not prepared. Mm. It, the person might not take it so well. So I think communication is a major part. But uh, we mostly say communication, but it's more, how? Than, more than how it is. Okay. Yeah, it's how you go about it. So okay. I would say communication can solve most of the okay. issues. Yeah. Before we continue with the discussion, I would like to let, let our audience know that our pop uh, vox pop is ready and so we'll come back to the discussion after it do do stay tuned so we are so so we are looking at so yeah we are looking at um, basically attending programs together these are some of the pos uh, positive actions i have attending events together it could be church it could be weddings or it could be even uh, just normal outing yeah, it's a positive action. You're going out probably maybe to the mall to watch movies, you know, that kind of stuff. Going out to somewhere, um, chat, yeah, all positive stuff. Uh, or let's assume even the AFCON was happening in Ghana. You could have gone to the stadium together. Communication. Yeah, that's the most important thing. In every relationship, there should be that communication between the two. Yeah, so that's all making time if you are talking about bonding i think it's making time because if um, i'm having my partner and then she's always busy and does not make time for us to even um talk to each other or um bond with each other speak to each other i think there is no way we are even going to get a chance to go out or maybe go for romantic dates because it all boils down to time so making time is that thing making time make time with regardless of what your schedules are anything just make time yes there should be first there should be a good communication you have to know each other and you have to know the person's dislike and what she also likes yes you have to know whether she likes like i'm, I'm talking about the girl's aspect you the guy you have to know whether the girl like giving like you like the girl like giving maybe surprises yes so Because once between twice shy, if it's not even about relationships per se, whatever you are doing, you actually pick stuff or maybe perceptions from maybe your encounter in the past, and it and it actually affects your decision your decision making going forward. So it's just a bias that it bound is to affect you. Yeah. The what I've seen, I'm speaking on that. Maybe some people's first relationship, maybe they can put their all in all. But due to that, maybe it leads to something else. Maybe they broke up or something like that. From the next relationship, the person wouldn't be able to put in much effort like this, which should be like the one, one partner might say maybe you don't really appreciate or love me that much. So personally, I think 
I am not in a relationship yet, but I think things that bring intimacy to relationships um, can be making time to communicate with your partner because it's important to know when one party is doing something wrong or when one party is doing something right. It helps you settle your differences among each other. So yes, communication, making time for communication is one, one thing. Spending time together and maybe you should actually share, share stuff. Maybe, maybe your weather problems or maybe any, any other thing. Communication, okay. yes, and then you showing genuine love, not like faking the love or something, yes. Okay. That. I want to speak on motherly love and then maybe family relation. So, me, when I heard about uh, Vows Day, I think it's a, a moment or a time that you can share maybe those of us that they are far away from families, you can come close together, have some intimacy with your family members, maybe conduct just a small party or something just to show love and gifts to other people in the family. Spending time together. Yeah, the more you spend time together, the more you create connections and all those kind of behaviors for yourselves. So if you want to create, you're in a relationship and you want to create a connection, which is very crucial, you need to spend more time together. Thank you for joining. In case you just joined us, this is the Mimosa Show on AAE TV. And that was the Vox Pop the team filmed on the streets of Accra. And I think some of the question was um, how um, some people see love and what Valentine's Day is. And I think one guy mentioned that sometimes he was talking about the cause of um, relationship um, deteriorating. And he mentioned that sometimes a person's upbringing. I would want Mrs. Fako to tell us more. How does someone's upbringing, upbringing affect their relationship? Okay. So, you know, um, our human development is, um, yeah, there are so many factors, mm -hmm. okay, that um, builds one up. And one of the important factors is how you are brought up. Mm. So you, you, are, you are taught how to know how to relate with others. You build your values from your upbringing. Mm -hmm. And so some people, for them, their parents' marriage was, of course, not for some people, for all of us, our parents' marriage might be the first relationship we would experience. Mm -hmm. And so they see how things are done at home. And they think that is how it is. That is how it's supposed to be. And so when they enter into a relationship, they want to transfer that they have learned into the relationship, knowingly or unknowingly. I, I had this uh, couple mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the guy was like, for, for him, the mother had to fight for the relationship, for the marriage. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened, the mother was the one who was always apologizing, doing this, doing that. So such a person... You can imagine, <laughs> even when he's wrong, he even when he's wrong exactly. because that exactly. is what, I mean, yeah. he has seen, that is what yeah. he has experienced. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to, you know, put into pra practice what you have experienced than what you have been taught mm -hmm. in yeah. school or yeah. anything. Yeah. And that plays a very important role in uh, how we relate with others. Relate with yes, others. so our upbringing, it does, it does. It does. Another yes. lady, yeah. <laughs> another lady, one of the ladies actually mentioned that sometimes people go in with their all hmm. for the first time in the relationship okay. and then they experience the breakup. And so it sort of like um, stops them from giving mm -hmm. their all mm -hmm. when they enter into the relationship. And of, obviously that can affect the particular or yeah. the, the relationship that they may be currently in. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? <laughs> See, uh, nobody would want to... Uh, get heartbroken twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm in her shoes, I'll be the same. Right. So I entered first. Things didn't go well. I was shown pepper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was served breakfast. And the next time, I wouldn't want to be served breakfast. I don't want dinner. Mm -hmm. Something better. Anyways, by the way. So um, I think it, when it comes to love, you don't entirely lose hope. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you keep trying. Right. However, there's help, mm -hmm. of which I know that um, uh, most of us do not know about. So just in case you are trying to enter another relationship mm -hmm. and you feel that your past relationship is trying to interfere based on the experience that you had, mm -hmm. we have counselors, exactly. we have psychologists, we have elderly Therapist. people that you can speak with. Let me put that one in quotes. We have experienced 
uh, wise elderly people you can speak with. Experience and wise. Experience and wise. <laughs> elderly people that you can speak with. But all the time, you do have counselors and psychologists you can speak with. Sometimes we see ourselves being um, weak when you want to tell, talk to people about our challenges. And I don't think that it's helpful because you will still be wallowing in your issues. So you should come out and be able to speak with us. We can guide you through as to how you should go about it. Everybody's experience is different. So certainly what we'll talk about during the session will be different from somebody else. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a uh, one jacket that everybody sh should wear. So I think they have help. So if you are going through that, please feel free. You have help. Okay. Mrs. Sefako, I would want you to tell me, maybe give me about three things mm -hmm. that couples can do to build their relationship. Okay. All right. So... Aside from the communication, the communication and trust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, respecting each other. Okay. Okay. So, you see your partner as someone who is valuable. And so, you respect his or her view. Mm -hmm. You prioritize him or her over others. So, when you let your, couple, your, your partner feel important mm -hmm. and feel respected, I mean, I think that you're on the way to a happy relationship. Mm -hmm. And then if you're able to make quality time, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the amount of time you spent, but the quality of time you spend mm -hmm. together. It could be just taking a stroll. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we think some of these things are Western, yeah. you know, yeah. but it, it, it costs nothing, yeah. but it's very helpful. To, so you just have time out mm -hmm. together. You just take a stroll. You don't need to necessarily spend money to go and sit at a plush mm -hmm. hotel or at a, a very expensive restaurant yeah. to make your marriage or your relationship work. Yeah. You can just have time together away from all the distractions and it helps you to connect, yeah. you know, spiritually, emotionally and, and all that. And I think you should also, some of the things you can also do to make, to build your relationship is to learn to speak your partner's love language. Mm -hmm. I think we have said that <laughs> already, but it yeah. is very important to, to do that mm -hmm. because the more you do that, the more your, your partner um, feels loved mm -hmm. because you can say you love someone, but then your, your actions might be the opposite, opposite. to your partner. Your mm -hmm. partner will say, you don't love me, yeah. you know, and you are like, I'm doing all this for you, and you are saying you don't love me. So you being able to speak your partner's language mm -hmm. and that you would need sacrifice because maybe naturally that's not how you, you would express mm. yeah. love towards your partner. So you need that sacrifice to be able to express, express your in, in the language that he or she understands. Understand. And you would realize that he would reciprocate or you warm towards mm -hmm. you yeah. and you see that your marriage is growing or your yeah. relationship is right. growing beautifully. Right. Like yeah. Mr. Samuel, do you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll add up. Right, so in a, in a relationship, I think you should be able to be ready to unlearn, mm -hmm. learn, mm -hmm. and relearn. Learn. As simple as is in <laughs> classrooms, it's the same way in relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, you should be able to unlearn the things that you think you know, mm -hmm. and also you have to be able to learn as changes come up, right? Because what is your stress today? Your stress today might be your boss. Mm. Your stress today might be looking for money for an investment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your stress to be, like, I don't mean, you are not feeling too well. Tomorrow, your stress has changed. Mm -hmm. So you have to always update yourself about the stress or whatever your, your partner is going through. Okay. Right. So continuous courtship. So courtship never ends. It's continuous okay. all the time. And another one too, I have to realize a major one. Let me add this one. Um, we we think we always want to think for a partner, so we, mm. we perceive instead of asking, mm. ask. We wouldn't ask. We want to perceive that our partner is thinking this mm. way. So we are doing mind reading, okay. and this is one of the distorted thinking issues. Mm -hmm. And we should always ask instead of mind read. Right. Okay. Right, thank thank you. you so much for joining me for this um, fruitful discussion. Right, right, right. I believe that our audience have learned something. I have personally learned something. Sure. You should communicate, but not don't just communicate. You yeah. should be able to communicate in your partner's love language. Yeah. You need to be able to communicate effectively uh, so and have some respect for your partner, mm -hmm. which would ultimately build trust and also build your relationship. We are wrapping up the show, but right. before we go, we have this charade that you're going okay. to play. It's pick and act, actually. So, oh, <laughs> so you pick one, oh and then he also picks one. 
just any of it. I hope it's okay. doable. Yeah, I'll also pick one. So maybe, oh. Mr. Sami, you go first. <laughs> this will be gentlemen first. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we can't use any other thing. We just have to act it out. Yes. Just, just if if it, if it's a question, you can just read it out. We need to also know. What I wish it was a question. <laughs> well, <laughs> act like you are in a pillow fight. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, but but someone is going to he is going to act like he's in a pillow fight with you. Oh, oh. I should have kept quiet. <laughs> so that you shouldn't have said it so that I will guess. You, oh, no, okay, you okay, guess. this is he's a special one. It out okay, to you. okay. So I go. So he's reading it out to you. Okay. Actually, because right. your your paper said act like you're in a pillow fight, okay. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's the only really? thing I can do right now. <laughs> of course. Okay. Can right. you tell us what yours is? Okay, so mine says that mm -hmm. what's your partner's most cherished childhood memory? Oh, okay. I wanted that. Ah, <laughs> see. So there are a lot of there are a lot of them. So my mind is just going round, round yeah. one. Okay. Trying to pick one. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, so I would say one of his most cherished childhood memory is how the dad used to you know, um, show hospitality okay. to people. Because he always says, wherever we go, whenever people are so nice to us, they treat us well. He tells me that. It is, he always remember what the dad mm. used to do. People will come and stay with them, and the way he takes care of them, and then now he sees that as, the dad has paid that forward okay. for us. And wherever he goes, he enjoys, he enjoys that. He enjoys that, yes. Yeah. So that's, that's one good. memory. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Mine says, name the toughest obstacle you have overcome together. How are you guys getting the same <laughs> No one is asking. Well, that's well, not fair. Probably Ladies. I don't have a partner, so I don't have to answer this, right? <laughs> you should. <laughs> Take I yourself know. back and answer this. Okay, let me try and recall. Okay. Um, the toughest obstacle. Well, I guess um, at some point, people were were questioning his personality okay. that oh maybe he's below you or okay. probably he's intimidated by you blah blah okay. blah so i think it was it was an obstacle that we both faced but okay. we've been able to overcome it okay that's good i'm just saying <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much it was sure. lovely having you guys on the show i had i have learned a lot and i know that my guests have learned a lot thank you so much and You're thank welcome. you too for tuning in this has been the mimosa show on aau tv and we have been discussing what builds and breaks relationship i am aja omi and you can also leave your comments via our social media handles at aau tv underscore african universities on x aau tv official on instagram and association of african universities on facebook and youtube don't forget the show is proudly brought to you by painting naturals um, Eden Bar, Magbell, Nutri Chips, TME Collections, Pamoni Collections, and Rosebeck Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic. I have been your host, Aja Omi. Don't, don't log off yet because we have so many exciting programs coming your way. Thank you for joining in and do stay tuned.